Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, it's all about Nano. Nano is a very simple text editor, and it's often the first text editor that a new Linux user actually uses. And I figured I would create a video in this series that was all about Nano, not only to show you guys how it works, but I think it would be great to have a video to refer people back to anytime I talk about Nano. So in this video, I'm going to, well, teach you guys all about Nano. So let's get started. Before we can use Nano, we have to make sure that it's actually installed. On quite a few distributions of Linux, it's installed by default, so most of the time you'll already have it. You can find out by typing which and then Nano. The which command allows us to check and see whether or not another command is available to us. And I receive some output, user bin Nano. That's telling us where the Nano binary actually is, which means it's installed. If you didn't receive any output on your end, then you can run something like sudo apt install and then nano, and apt is specific to Debian and Ubuntu, so if you are using a different distribution of Linux, then you can replace apt with dnf, yum, pacman, or whatever your distribution's package manager happens to be. At least in the case of Debian and Ubuntu, this command right here would install nano if it wasn't already present, but on my end, I don't have to run this because again, it's already installed. The simplest way to use nano is to simply type nano and then press enter. Once you do that, you'll notice that it says new buffer right here, and that means that we've opened nano with no particular file in mind. It's just a blank slate that we can use to type whatever we want. And using it is very easy. We don't have to enter a specific mode in order to start typing. We could just start typing. As you can see here, I could type whatever I'd like. I could press enter to go to another line. And then I could use the arrow keys to actually move the cursor wherever I want to start typing. So as you can see, it's very easy to use. Now pay special attention to the section down here. As you can see, there are several letters there that have a caret symbol to the left. The caret symbol represents the control key. And that means you can hold control and press any of the letter keys that are designated here for various effects. For example, right here we have write out. That's essentially the same as save. So if I was to hold control and press O, that's gonna bring up the save dialog. So you can give it a file name and then press enter. And then right here, it shows that we can hold control and press X to exit. So I'll do that right now. And we've exited the editor. If I list the storage, you'll see that I have the file right here that I was editing in Nano. I didn't tell it where to save the file, I just gave it a file name. So if you don't actually give it a location where to save the file, what it's going to do is save the file wherever your current working directory happens to be. In my case, I'm in the home directory, so I put the file right here. You can also edit an existing file as well by simply typing nano, and then you give it a path and then a file name. If the file that you want to edit is in your current working directory, then you can omit the path. And that's why I'm able to type textfile.txt like that to go ahead and edit that file yet again. And there it is. That's the same file that we were just editing a moment ago. If the file is somewhere else on the file system, that's pretty easy as well. So I'll run nano and the file that I want to edit as an example is slash etsy slash ssh and then sshd underscore config, which is the configuration file for the ssh service. Now down here, it's telling me that this particular file is not writable, and that's only because I don't actually have permission to edit this file. I can view it, but I can't edit it. If I was to use something like sudo, that would have gave me permission to edit this file, but that's okay because I really don't want to edit this file. There's other videos that go over SSH anyway, but I wanted to get a file on the screen that's more practical, and the SSH config file is definitely something that you should edit if you haven't already done so. Reason being, SSH is a way that outside people can get into your server. It's definitely something that you want to lock down. And like many other things in Linux, you customize it by editing the config file for it. And the config file again is what you see here. So what I want to do right now is edit the port number. SSH by default listens on port 22. So what I want to do then is search for something and I could do that by holding control and pressing W. What I'm going to do is type what I want to search for. I want to search for the port. And as soon as I pressed enter, it brought me right to the line where the first occurrence of the word port actually is. And it's right here. 
So if I actually did want to edit this, I can make my changes. I can uncomment that. I could change the port number to something else, maybe 2222. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea. But the key takeaway is I was able to search for a specific line. It brought me right to that line. And that's how I got there. And that's certainly a lot faster than just manually going through every single line searching for something. You get the idea. So at this point, what I'm going to do is just exit out of this file without saving any of the changes. I'm not able to save the changes anyway. And again, it was control X to exit. I'm going to answer no by pressing N. And now I'm back to the command line. Since I'm going to be needing a file that has more than just a few lines for the remainder of the examples in this video, I'm going to make a copy of this file. And then I'll save that copy here locally. And here it is. So what I'm going to do is open the file that I just copied. And here's the copy. So there's a few more things that I'd like to show you. So for example, what I'm going to do is go back to that same line here. So I'll search for that port line again. Now let's say, for example, I wanted to cut that entire line. And I could do that by holding Control and pressing K. Now obviously, I would not want to save this particular file over the original SSH config file. I'm using this as an example. You definitely don't want to edit a production SSH config unless you're doing something like trying to secure it. But it really doesn't matter what file you're editing, so long as you have permission to edit it, and it has more than a few lines. Anyway, I removed that entire line by holding Control and pressing K, so that gives you the ability to cut. Now notice here that we also have caret symbol U, and what the U stands for is uncut. The verbiage here says paste. It's essentially the same thing. When I cut that line, it actually put it in the paste buffer, so I could do Control U, and that pasted the line right there. And as you can see, I could keep on pasting and pasting and pasting. So you can cut with Control K and paste with Control U. We also have Control G for Git Help. And this will bring up a file that you can read to learn even more about Nano. As you can see, there's quite a few lines here. But that'll give you access to even more information if you need it. I'll just do Control X to exit out. And that takes me back to the file. So what I'm going to do is exit out. I won't save the changes. Now another trick that I want to show you guys is that you can actually start Nano at a very specific line number if you know the line number that you want to edit. And to do that, we could type Nano, and then plus, and after the plus, we type the line number that we want to start on. In my case, I want to start on line number, let's say, 15. And again, I'm going to edit that same copy of the SSH config file yet again, and I'll press Enter. Now, notice that it took me right to the port line, as you can see here. So line number 15, at least in my case here on Ubuntu, is the exact line where the port number declaration is made. And there's all kinds of cool tricks like this. In addition, what I could do is type nano-v and then the file name. And then what I'm going to do is go back down to line number 15. I'm going to uncomment port 22. But as you can see, I can't actually edit the file. And that's because the dash v option represents view only mode. And that could be very useful if you are editing a file and you don't want to accidentally make changes to that file. Dash V again is view only and you won't be able to make changes in that mode. Now I'll show you guys yet another trick. I've opened up the SSH config file and maybe I meant to actually type plus 15 to go to line number 15. Honestly, it's not really hard to go to line number 15. I only have to press the page down button a few times. But what if the line was at 10,257? That would take quite a bit of scrolling. Now, of course, I could exit the file and then type the plus sign along with the line number with the nano command to go to the line that I want to go to. But I don't actually have to exit nano in order to go to a specific line. So I can go to a specific line number without leaving Vim by holding Control and pressing W, which is going to get me into the search box. And you'll notice down here that these options have actually changed from what they were before, including this one, which gives me the option to go to a very specific line. As it shows here, I'll hold Control and press T. And now it's asking me for the line number. I'll type 15, for example. And that takes me back to that specific line. That's pretty cool. So I do have one more trick that I want to show you guys, but first a quick summary. You can access Nano by simply typing Nano. 
You can edit a file that's in your local working directory by typing nano along with the name of that file. If that file is somewhere else, then you simply type the path to that file along with the name. And in addition to that, I also showed you some other tricks, such as going to a very specific line number. So for example, we can go to line number 20 by typing plus 20 with the nano command. But another trick that nano has up its sleeve is that it has support for checking the spelling of a particular line. In order to do that, you'll need to install the spell package. So I'll install it right now. I'll press enter. Now that we have the spell package installed, we should actually be able to do spell checking within Nano. And to show that process, I'm going to open a file that I created off camera. This one right here. And I'm not sure why, but something doesn't look right when it comes to this particular sentence. So the keyboard shortcut for checking the spelling is Control T. And it immediately noticed that awesome is misspelled. It's missing the first E. So what I'll do is type in the replacement word. And I spelled it correctly this time. I'll press enter. And then I'll confirm by pressing Y for yes. And then when I'm done, I'll hold control and press C to break out of the spell check mode. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you how to use Nano. Nano is a very simple text editor. It gets the job done, and I really like it. Of course, I also like Vim quite a bit as well, and I also have some videos on Learn Linux TV that are all about Vim, including an entire series about Vim. So definitely check out those videos if you want to learn that text editor. But as far as Nano is concerned, I think the mission has been accomplished in teaching you guys how to use it. If you found this video helpful, please click that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.